Hello and welcome to the Cronkite File. I'm Austin Bundy alongside my colleague Alyssa Klink. Over the weekend, President Donald Trump signed a controversial executive order banning entry to the U.S. for people from Iraq, Iran, Syria, Yemen, Sudan, Libya, and Somalia. Two Iraqi men who have worked for the U.S. government were detained at JFK Airport in New York because of this order, along with many other permanent resident or green card holding people from the aforementioned countries. Some of them were even deported, and this sparked protests at several airports across the country and a lawsuit by the ACLU, which resulted in a federal judge granting a temporary block on the executive order and ordering TSA and border agents to release the detainees and allow them access to lawyers. Despite the White House saying the order does not apply to permanent resident holders or green card holders, confusion is still causing some agents to continue to detain and deny these people attorneys. Those opposed to the executive order have called it a ban on Muslims. While it seems that way, it is not. In fact, the country's President Trump listed have produced zero citizens who have attacked or killed Americans in the U.S. since 1975. The four countries he did not ban, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates, have produced over 3,000, including the 9-11 attackers. President Trump also has business ties to those four countries. Alyssa? Thanks, Austin. And on the topic, President Trump signed an executive memorandum regarding the name of the terrorist group known as ISIS. Since 2014, former President Barack Obama and the government referred to the group as ISIL, meaning the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. Trump said, quote, this is the plan to defeat the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. In other words, ISIS. This acronym came to be during Mr. Obama's second term after American intelligence agencies started to call what we know as ISIS, ISIL. The term Levant is used to include the larger area of Syria, throwing Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel in the mix. Since President Trump has signed this memorandum, the Pentagon is to have a proposed plan within 30 days. In a tweet that President Trump wrote on December 6, 2016, he said, quote, wish Obama would say ISIS, almost like everyone else, rather than ISIL. That's it for politics. Here's Emily Taylor with entertainment. Thanks, Alyssa. Teasing fans on Instagram the past few weeks with Polaroid snapshots displaying important life moments, Leah Michelle finally made the surprise announcement she was going to release a second album. The singer had no hesitation in making the music because it was something she made for herself. She stated, this record deserves all of my time and care and that's what I plan on doing this year. That's what I've been trying to do with this whole record. Just connect to me and where I'm from. The singer put great thought into its title, wanting a name that captured the record's raw essence. After consulting Hamilton star and best friend Jonathan Groff, she decided to call it Places, as in the theater term for a show is about to start. The relationship she shared with late boyfriend Corey Monteith was largely inspirational in its making. Though this time in her life was filled with great pain, she used her sorrow to transform into a happier, healthier individual. Working on both herself physically and mentally was and still is a work in progress. However, this album speaks to her obstacles and triumphs, especially when it comes to love. Though our release date hasn't been specified, we will be keeping an eye out for it. That's all in entertainment this week. Now let's go to Lauren Bukowski with sports. Thanks, Emily. President Trump's ban on visitors from Muslim nations could have an impact on the international sports world and potentially threaten the chances of Los Angeles, California hosting the 2024 Summer Olympic Games as well as the United States hosting the 2026 World Cup for soccer. A spokesman for the United States Olympic Committee, Patrick Sandusky, said, quote, We are working closely with the administration to understand the new rules and how we best navigate them as it pertains to visiting athletes. It also could affect where and how international athletes train as many look outside of their home country for different weather in places like the United States. Trump's ban has an immediate effect on wrestling because Iran has announced they will stop Americans from entering the country. The United States freestyle wrestling team is scheduled to appear in the World Cup competition in Iran. A lot of questions are arising over Trump's decisions, and sports is just one area of the conversation that is causing some confusion, so we will just have to wait and see. Although nothing is set in stone yet, it will definitely be interesting to see how this all plays out. That's all for sports. Here's Jennifer Alvarez with Local News. Thank you, Lauren. In local news, hundreds protested President Trump's immigration ban Sunday at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. The executive order signed Friday prohibits the entry of refugees from seven predominantly Muslim countries into the United States. According to 12 News, an estimated 600 people showed up to chant, 
advocate and protest against the new order in front of Terminal 4. Phoenix police and airport security monitored the growing crowd throughout the day, and some cars honked in support while others shook their heads in disapproval as protesters held signs and gave speeches. In a White House issued statement defending the order, Trump said, this is not about religion. This is about terror and keeping our country safe. And now here's Madeline Holler and Sammy Lobibau with National News. Thank you, Jenny. With your National News update, I'm Sammy Lomibau. And I'm Madeline Holler. Trump recently declared a National Day of Patriotic Devotion. However, many Americans were either unaware or ill-informed about his proclamation, according to an article published by CNBC. The document published by the Office of the Federal Register detailed that Donald J. Trump, the 45th President of the United States, proclaimed his inauguration day, January 20th, 2017, to be considered a National Day of Patriotism. Trump makes mention of strengthening the bonds of Americans and the United States states, as well as redefining the government's responsibilities to its people within the proclamation. The proclamation goes on to state a new national pride stirs the American soul and inspired the American heart. We are one people united by a common destiny and a shared purpose. Discussion of the proclamation being moved was first mentioned by White House spokesman Sean Spicer via a tweet from his official press secretary social handle. Presidential proclamations are traditionally made well in advance. However, Trump bears the exception as he chose to declare recognition of American pride on the day he officially swore in as president of the United States a little over a week ago. Attorneys for five death row inmates in Ohio are asking a judge to let them observe other executions before their own clients are executed. The lawyers believe that by witnessing other executions, they will be able to ensure that the death penalty procedures are being carried out constitutionally. The attorneys feel that their observations could possibly have an impact on the Ohio lawsuit concerning the state's new three-drug lethal injection process. The state opposes the attorney's request because additional witnesses are not usually allowed to watch the process. Ohio's attorney general office has since then appealed Magistrate Judge Michael Merz's ruling and delayed three upcoming executions stating that the new process is unconstitutional. But for now, that's the news. For all of us on Cronkite File, thanks for watching.